between prepping ingredients, setting the table, and planning your tomorrow. Sometimes you need an extra hand with dinner. Delta Faucet is here to help. Just ask your connected home device to fill your pasta pot with Delta Faucet Voice IQ technology and fill it with the perfect amount of water. Done. Visit deltafaucet.com slash voice IQ to see how Voice IQ can fill your dog's bowl, wash your hands, and more. Howard's new flagship showroom in Long Beach is now open with 22,500 square feet of design inspiration. Shop premier brands such as Thermador, Monogram, Gen Air, Fisher Paykel, and many more. Experience live working products featuring the latest technology and innovations. Walk in or make an appointment with a product expert for a personalized shopping experience. This is appliance shopping as it was meant to be. Shop Howard's at Marina Pacifica in Long Beach or visit Howard's.com for more information. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 144. So we are in New Mexico, folks. We are here. We hit the ground running, and I've already sat down with the source, and I've spoke to this source for about an hour and a half. And this source is an ex-law enforcement agent, Here in the state of New Mexico, I won't go into which agency. They'd like to keep themselves anonymous, so that's fine. That's what we're going to do. But this source had a couple of interesting things to say when we sat down and had our talk. And one of the the two things that I'm going to talk about on the podcast tonight before I go deeper into it when I get back to Vegas after I can, you know, go through my notes and really sit down and we'll do like an hour show about everything that I learned here. So what we'll do is while I'm here for the next couple of days, we'll do our usual daily drops and I'll give you guys uh, some lead-ins on, you know, what's, what to expect when I get back to Vegas and I can really go through my notes. I took some notes, obviously, of, of when we were having our discussion and um, I circled a couple of things that I wanted to talk to talk about on the show tonight. So that's what we'll do. And one of those things is that now I've had two people, now that this source has confirmed this as well, I've had two people confirm that Bill Clinton was a frequent guest at the Zorro Ranch. Now, folks, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that he was engaged in anything anything criminal. I don't have that evidence. I, I don't just make the, I won't just make an accusation such as that. But what I can tell you is, according to both of these sources, Bill Clinton was a frequent guest to Zorro Ranch. And now you add that to Jared Kellogg's statements about Bill Clinton and Hillary coming to the the Western world out at Zorro Ranch to use it as a vacation spot. And that's three witnesses now that I can just remember off the top of my head. And I'm sure that there's more, obviously. But the three, you know, those are the three that I can definitely remember right off the top of my head. And obviously, I just had one tell me to my face that this occurred. So it's obvious to me that Bill Clinton is lying about his trips to New Mexico. Now, that could be for any number of reasons. I'm not going to speculate why he would be lying about his trips to New Mexico. You know, we all have our opinions about that, I guess. But what I will say is this. He is as much of a liar as Andrew. And how Bill Clinton isn't being absolutely, absolutely hounded by the legacy media over all of this, I have no idea. If I can cultivate a source that can place him there, do you really think that the legacy media, with all the resources that they have, couldn't have done the same? Is it that they couldn't have done the same, or they didn't want to do the same? Remember, when this all happened, what Nancy Pelosi's daughter said. You know, this is going to affect a lot of our faves, something along those lines. And personally, I don't even I don't even understand what that means. I don't have any faves in politics. It's not a, a football game, right? It's not a football game for me, especially these days. You know, what you have is you have two two tribalistic sides that are just arguing all the time, and it's it's absolutely ridiculous at this point. I don't want anything to do with that. But I will tell you this much. The fact that Bill Clinton is not being completely and utterly raked over the coals over this whole entire situation, I don't know how this man is escaping the spotlight here. He is the king of the deke. He is never, ever, ever 
ever caught slipping. And I'll tell you, look, again, I'm not saying he did anything illegal while he was here. I have no idea. I have no evidence that points to that. But I'm just curious why this guy is lying about it, right? If you came to the Zorro Ranch and you were here as a guest of Epstein's, we all know you were on the plane 26 times. What's the point in lying about it at this right now, at this juncture, right? Just admit it. Yeah, I was at the ranch, me, Hillary, my kid went, we used the West World and we used it as a vacation spot. Jeffrey and I were friends at the time. I had no idea, right? Why doesn't he just come out and say that? But no, he is such uh, he's such a liar that he can't even do say anything like that. He has to just say, nope, I was never at the ranch. That wasn't me. And the media is just like, oh, okay, well, he was never at the ranch, folks. Let's not dig any deeper. It's just like with the, the Chinese giving the numbers on the, the coronavirus. Yeah, okay, sure, those are the real numbers. We're going to believe the Communist Chinese Party? Okay, yeah, that's a reliable narrator. I mean, they call Bill Clinton Slick Willie for a reason, folks, right? Uh, you know, come on. And the second thing that I wanted to talk about is how this source showed just utter disgust for the higher-ups in law enforcement in New Mexico, and not only just the higher-ups in law enforcement in New Mexico, but the politicians in New Mexico, and how they basically turned a blind eye, just like in the Virgin Islands, to what was occurring here, how everybody knew that Jeffrey Epstein was a sick son of a bitch and everybody knew and had heard the whispers of what was occurring in Palm Beach and New York and the Virgin Islands and to think that people here were that naive is it's a stretch okay so my source was saying that it was disgusting to to witness the way that Epstein was able to finesse these higher ups with not only you know political contributions, but the, you know, just the the whole charity thing and how he had his fingers deep in, uh, you know, the Santa Fe Institute here in town. That's a, another thing the source was telling me about, how his ties to the Santa Fe Institute have been downplayed, how he was, uh, you know, tied a lot deeper to them than we've, we've heard and how they didn't donate all of the money that they have gotten from Jeffrey Epstein. You know, these are the sort of things that we talked about tonight. And it's a lot to process, right? It is a lot to process. But, you know, the corruption, it really feeds into everything that we've thought, right? And it confirms the things that we've been discussing. And that's really, truly what I was hoping to do is you know, to come here and get some concrete evidence that there has been some malfeasance, right? We know that there has been, we've seen it, but to hear it from the horse's mouth is a whole different story. To talk to somebody who was so disgusted that they left their position because of the way the corruption was occurring, not with just only the Epstein case, but several other things, but it was... To, to talk to this person and to see that, you know, they spent their whole life to get the, the job that they had and then to give it all up because they were so disgusted by the behavior of the higher ups and the elected officials that they couldn't, they couldn't go home and even look themselves in the mirror at night and they couldn't, you know, lay down with their wives and they couldn't, you know, hang out with their kids because they knew exactly what the hell was going on at that Zorro ranch. But what, they, what could they do if the, the higher ups weren't going to make the call and they were going to look the other way? This isn't, you know, the, the 1800s where the Texas Rangers are, are going to go, uh, you know, vigilante justice on people. That's not the way our system works, unfortunately. It should maybe in some cases, right? But that's not the way it works. And that's, you know, this source was so disgusted by the whole entire thing that they were like, you know what, Bobby, I just had to take a step back and I had to, I had to do something else with my life because I couldn't in good conscience get up every day and go to work and know what I know and not do anything about it. And then even if they, he, the, uh, the source was like, you know, we, we talk about it and people even know about it and still you don't even hear about it in the media. So I wonder how many times that sources like this have been, you know, ignored. 
we've seen such a pattern of of people being ignored in in this Jeffrey Epstein case that it doesn't shock me that even somebody who was a law enforcement official who was trying to I guess blow blow the whistle even almost was just ignored and shot down and it was just buried as in ah, you know they're worried they're, they're taking care of it in New York they got it under control in New York and it was always like a pass the buck thing and man I just I don't know it's just it's just layer upon layer upon layer and you know I'm just here this is the first day this is the first day, right? And, you know, an hour and a half conversation. Um, I did not record audio. They were not comfortable with that. But I did transcribe notes of pretty much the whole conversation. And um, I'm going to obviously, like I said, I'm going to put it all together once I have all three of these interviews put together. So that's one down. I have two more tomorrow. Once I have the other interviews done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it up in an article. And I'll uh, I'll let, I'll keep you guys posted on where I'm going to put that article. Maybe a Medium account or something like that, and uh, it'll give you an, uh, a more in-depth look at you know everything that I was talking to him about uh, to them about talking to the sources about you know it's uh, it's just crazy, right? It's just a whole crazy situation. Um, how the higher ups and law enforcement, the higher ups in law enforcement and the higher ups in like, um, you know, obviously the political realm, but even the power players, the money brokers of the state, you know, the people who wield the real power, the people that are funding this stuff, the people that are funding these politicians, how they had a vested interest in making sure that people look the other way. And, you know, we've always talked about that, about that here on the podcast and in other places, obviously, other content creators talk about the same thing because when you follow the evidence, well, that's where it leads you. But to hear it from the horse's mouth and to hear how disgusted this person was by the whole entire situation is just, man, it was really eye-opening to me. And it it makes me truly believe that we are certainly on the right track here folks and we've picked up the scent here at the Jeffrey Epstein show for sure and like a bloodhound we're going to chase it down till the very 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 end so I'm going to forego reading an article tonight I wanted to just bring you guys up to date on uh on what I what I had going on tonight and a little blurb about my uh my sit down with my source and then when I get up tomorrow before I head out to Zorro Ranch, we'll do a morning update. And then when I get to Zorro Ranch, well, I'm going to do an update from the car in front of the in front of the place, whatever. And uh, then, of course, we'll do the daily drop at night. So we're looking at three episodes tomorrow for sure. And then, of course, if I found, find out anything that I think you got, you folks need to know right away, I'll jump on and I'll record something right away. But definitely, at the very least, three episodes tomorrow, and we'll uh, we'll jump into our regular format in the morning. I'll read a uh, the morning update. We'll do the morning update. We'll catch up on any any news that maybe we missed out on today because I'm just doing this uh, this kind of an interlude here, daily drop for you, so you got you folks are all uh, caught up. We'll, we'll uh, make sure we catch up on the news in the morning. That way we keep our catalog correct. And then, of course, like I said, I have the two more sit-downs tomorrow. I have the trip to Zorro Ranch tomorrow. I have the trip to Santa Fe Institute tomorrow. So I have a very, very, very busy day. But even if I have to record the segments in the car, that's what I'll do. So we're just going to keep it rocking and we're going to keep it rolling, folks. And... Who knows? Who knows what else I'm going to hear from these people? And whatever it is, whatever the evidence is, wherever it leads, I'll be right here on the Jeffrey Epstein Show on this podcast to share it with you. And before I go, I would just like to thank all of you who sent me emails about our dog passing away. That It's very nice. You, you know, you, you folks are really just just an awesome audience, great listeners, and just great people to interact with. And some of the ideas and the emails I receive from you just blow me away. The intelligence level 
of the listeners of this show is just top notch. Of course, there was someone named Buttwack Taintwick or something that uh, sent an email today talking some nonsense. You know, that's pretty much the. Very rarely do I get emails like that, but you know, every now and then you have some kind of weirdo out there listening to the podcast who has some sort of wacky complaint and just it's, it was the the name of the the email account had me cracking up tainter butt whacker or something ridiculous like that. So if you're listening out there, pal, great email handle, pretty funny stuff. Um, for the rest of you, that actually mattered to me. Uh, again, thank you for the emails I got about the dog. That was, it was pretty awesome. It was moving and, you know, it, it's, I know it's just a dog to some people and, but, you know, animals are part of uh, our family for sure, especially Carrie and I. We're very, uh, we're very big on the whole animal thing and I certainly like animals more than I like people for the most part. So when, when she passed away, even though she was older, it was still sad and I'm still sad today, obviously. It's hard. But, you know, we have to keep moving on in life with every, like, like anything else. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who sent me the emails. And now that I've settled in and I'm going to be relaxing for the rest of the night, I'll be answering those emails personally. But I wanted to do uh, one broad shout out as well for, uh, you know, everybody who was uh, so, so nice and so uh, concerned about how Carrie and I were feeling. We definitely appreciate it. And obviously... I, I definitely appreciate all of you listening to the podcast because without you, well, my dad would be getting real tired of me sitting in his backyard running my yap and making his eardrums bleed with this nonsense. All right, everybody. So we'll be back tomorrow with our usual format, the morning update, and we'll rock and roll from there. If you'd like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. If you enjoy my work and you like the content and you would like to help out and support the podcast, you can click on the GoFundMe link inside of the description box. All right, everybody, enjoy your evening, and I will talk to you all in the morning. Breathe in. Breathe out and take in the healing qualities of Ayurveda at Southern California University of Health Sciences, balancing your mind, body, and spirit. After living with my arthritis for over 10 years, I made the choice. Thanks to the personalized treatment I received, I now live a pain-free life. Discover how Ayurveda can change your life at findyourbalancetoday.com. It's the My Daughter's Having a Sleepover with five of her friends. But I know just the place to go to get something for everybody. And just a little something for myself, too, meal. There's a meal for every moment on the McDonald's one two three dollars menu. Mix and match old favorites and new classics like a McDouble, a McChicken, or a hot and spicy McChicken. Get any two for three fifty. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer or combo meal. Single item at regular price.